Hi, my name is Alison Mead from Silicon Bullet, and I'm going to show you how you can in Xero create one invoice from multiple purchase orders. This is something that a client of mine has been asking about this week. So I thought it would be a good start for me to have a go at doing some instructional videos. OK, so the first place that I'm going to go to is uh, from business. I am going to go to purchase orders. And then in once in purchase orders, you need to have the purchase orders that you need to create into approved area. So in this example, Dimples Warehouse have sent us a invoice, which is one invoice which encompasses purchase order four and purchase order five to give us a total of £292. So if you then click on the left and highlight the purchase orders that you need, you can double check that you have the correct amount because it tells you how many is selected. If we then choose copy to, give it a moment to respond. Don't you just love it with technology when it's a bit slow to respond? There we go. Just have patience. That's what you need. And there it is because I've done that archetypal thing of clicking lots of times. Right. So we want to send this to a bill. And we want to mark these bills as having been fully billed so we don't accidentally build them again. What I'm going to do down here is choose create a draft. Don't make the mistake of creating an invoice because that would be a sales invoice. A bill is where you would put a purchase invoice from a supplier. So if I now create draft, we can then go and view that bill. What I would normally do at this point is edit the date to be the date that it shows on the top of the bill. Add your due date. See a little shortcut here is if it's the end of the month following or whatever, we can put plus 30, 30 days to give us 30 days to pay. Now at this point, zero has put in the purchase order numbers as the reference. I would actually delete that and put the supplier's purchase order number in. If you need to check which purchase orders have been included on this bill, you can always look in the notes and history at the bottom and it says it there at the bottom or it says here at the moment copied from purchase orders. If there was any extra information that I needed to put in there or save, say I've got a region that I need to put in or I've got other tracking codes, this is the point to add them in then. And then if we've got any adjustments to tax, we can put those in there. You know, sometimes with uh, rounding errors, your VAT might not be exactly right. If you don't have that adjustments to tax areas there, it's switched on and off by this little plus by the tax rate. So you're able to put that in. Right, so now I'm happy that everything is correct and it matches my invoice from my supplier. I can now approve that invoice. And that is now sitting in my bills to pay with everything else. So that's a very simple step by step guide on how to create an invoice. Um, this is Alison Mead from Silicon Bullet. If you want any more bookkeeping tips, then do get in touch. Just happens to be the moment where the doorbell's ringing, the dog's barking and all sorts of rubbish is going on here. But you know me, if you follow my channel, you get my videos, warts and all. I hope that's useful. If you've got other things that you're stuck on in Zero or Sage 50, do let me know and I can do similar instructional videos for you. I'm just starting out with doing these, so ideas would be appreciated from you. So let me go back in to my Teams meeting where I have recorded this and stop the recording. And I hope that has proved useful to you.